Hello again and welcome back to Illegally Cited. This is Jesse here and yeah, it is that time again. We are wrapping up 2021. God, this year, I've said it before, but man, let me tell you, um, on one hand, it feels like this year rushed by. And on the other hand, it kind of seems like an eon ago because I look back and I go, wow, that happened this year? Or wait, didn't that happen two, three years ago? Uh, no, it in fact did not. <laughs> so uh, we are going to be doing a few videos uh, as I've done the last several years here. And I'm not going to do like my top 10 or anything like this is my game of the year or, the, you know, top 10 games of the year. Uh, we're just going to be taking a look at different aspects of 2021 in review. And we are going to look at the, some technology that came out, some accessibility and assistive technology. We are going to look at um, <clears throat> mainstream games, of course, um, blind accessible games, all those types of things. So we're going to talk about that in, I would probably say, I don't know, three, four videos. We'll see how many it ends up being. But I have... This is the one time where I do kind of write a list of things down because there's just so much to cover. And you notice we're looking around this uh, nice neighborhood, except for this house that we're standing in front of. Because yes, we're just for you guys something to look at during these videos. We are going to play what I would probably say <laughs> is one of my games of the year. It's way, way up there. It's definitely one of the mon ones that I've played the absolute most. And that is Power Wash Simulator. It's just oddly relaxing. It's kind of great. And so we are going to clean the uh, sidewalk, clean this nice suburban house. And we are going to chat 2021. So to anyone who is new to the channel, thank you for stopping by. Uh, feel free to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. Everything is divided into playlists, so you're able to find uh, what you're looking for uh, pretty easily. Uh, I am legally blind, so I do cover technology, games, um, events, um, VR, AR, virtual reality, augmented reality, whatever I can, just all kinds of techie topics mainly. Uh, but from a blind slash low vision or legally blind perspective, because I do have some usable vision. I do use screen readers. I use mag screen magnification. Uh, I do use all of that type of thing. Uh, but I do use my vision for quite a bit as well. So that's just kind of my PSA to get us started here. Um, as far as the channel goes, it's been a really good year. Um, I did miss one video update, like I thought about it early one day and then I totally forgot to unlock a video. So I think I unlocked it on a sa uh, Sunday instead of a Saturday. But typically I will unlock videos for everybody on Monday, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. And uh, Mondays are stream archives because I do stream on Twitch as well, twitch.tv slash illegally cited. I started my streaming journey a few years ago on Mixer, believe it or not. Thought I would give that a try. Unfortunately, Mixer is no more. That uh, went away in the summer of 2020. So I said, yeah, you know, I suppose I could try doing this uh, streaming thing a little more. So I switched over to Twitch and uh, have been doing so off and on ever since. You can find me at twitch.tv slash illegally cited. And uh, yeah, it, it's been pretty fun. I will admit earlier this year, uh, mainly this summer, I kind of took a break from streaming on Twitch, or just streaming in general. I just really like, yeah, there were games I wanted to play, but nothing I really felt like streaming seriously I just really wasn't in the mood to be all that social for whatever reason kind of got busy with a few other things so I did take a break from streaming 
uh, for a while this year. So, yeah, there was a little bit of a gap. People kind of were wondering where I was. But I am back now, and I have been trying to stream at least once per weekend. Uh, I had to take a break a couple of weeks ago because my internet was not behaving itself. I was kind of intermittently losing internet the... Uh, uh, often on that weekend for a couple or for a couple of days, so I figured mm, probably better hold off on the streaming for now. But uh, I do try to stream, like I said, once, uh, once maybe twice a week if I'm really really into a game. Uh, like I've been getting into Godfall a lot the last uh, couple of weeks and still working on that game. I'm enjoying it a lot more than other people say they do, so I'm rather enjoying Godfall. But we'll get to that later. So, like I said, everything on the channel is divided into playlists. Uh, you'll find things on PC, um, you know, a lot of low vision spotlights. These are games that I cover that are mainstream games that you kind of have to have some vision to be able to play them. You know, you may be able to play them if you are legally blind like myself, but you do need some usable vision to be able to play these games, low vision spotlights. And then I have PC and iOS accessible game spotlight playlists as well. These, I mean, when I mean accessible, I'm looking at totally blind accessible. So a lot of times in on Twitter or the comments in a video, I get I get comments saying, "Is this game blind accessible?" And that's what I'm really trying to get across in uh, these channel updates and things is that. If I say, if, it, if the video is titled Accessible Game Spotlight, whatever it is, PC, Xbox, PS5, iOS, Android, whatever it happens to be, uh, rest assured that it is a game that you can at least play with no usable vision. So I have playlists for that. I do cover virtual reality on the channel. Uh, I have an Oculus Rift and an Oculus Quest. Although, as we'll get into a little later, I've kind of been taking a little break on VR as well, mainly because I'm getting kind of frustrated with the lack of advancement in any form of accessibility whatsoever. So, we'll talk a little bit about that in a future uh, part of this video. But, um, yeah, I mean, as far as the way the channel has been going, uh, we are over, I think, 3,100 subscribers now um, which hey that was more than I ever thought I would get I think the first several years I've been doing this since 2012 God forbid the channel is going to be <laughs> the channel is going to be 10 years old next year which is frightening to me it just <laughs> I cannot believe I've been doing this for almost a decade that's insane. That is just ridiculous. I mean, it's cool. I, I really still enjoy it. It's The channel's not going anywhere, so I do enjoy it. But I, I can't believe um, that we've been doing this for almost 10 years. But um, where was I going with that? Oh, yeah, I mean, the channel itself is going strong. I've uh, been trying a few different things here and there. Uh, really becoming, you know, the last couple of years I've really become a lot more comfortable uh, trying different types of videos and just being, you know, more conversational, uh, better presentation style. Like, like, again, the first few years I, I started Illegally Cited, like, I was lucky if I had, you know, a dozen subscribers. I was lucky if I had three views on a video, let alone any. Um, so... I was just kind of cranking them out uh, once or twice a week. You know, I've I've shifted over the years on on how many videos I release a week, just until I kind of settled into what I felt I could reasonably do. And um, but yeah, I mean, the channel was like it was it was fun, but it really wasn't going anywhere. But uh, I've actually in the last few years, like I've met people in person who was like, oh. You're the illegally cited guy. I know who you are. I, you know, it's kind of weird actually, uh, to you know, for to be recognized. I, I like I even during my day job, I have been recognized um, 
by clients and like I'll be talking to them and I'll mention that I'm into gaming and stuff or they'll have a question and I've had a couple people like flat out ask me hey are you that guy that runs illegally cited I'm like uh yeah um, so that's been kind of a surreal experience uh, and the channel has also gotten me into it's afforded me a lot of opportunities the last several years so I am extremely thankful for that uh, I'm very thankful for everyone who does stop by, who subscribes, watches regularly. I've received some great comments lately. Um, definitely appreciate that. So thank you to everyone for that. Um, you know, I've had some really good people in Twitch as well lately. Uh, that's been fun. So yeah, it's been a good year. Um, a lot of games, a lot of indie stuff, a lot of, uh, there's been a fair few accessible games, which we'll get to in a future video, but, um, yeah, 2020 has been an interesting year, to say the least. Um, that is kind of my Twitch and YouTube channel update. Uh, let me quick take a gander at my notes. Uh, because I know we, I'm, I'm going to cover a few more things in this video. Channel update. Oh yeah, so projects. Like I said, it, it kind of leads into, this has been a busy year for me. And I remember seeing people talking on Twitter the last few weeks. There's been this trend. I haven't done it myself yet, but everyone's like, since the pandemic started, I... And then people will list off a bunch of things that they accomplished... And I think that is kind of a cool thing because, you know, again, with the pandemic and people having to be in quarantine and isolation and just all kinds of things and, you know, everything else going on in the world right now, um, it's nice to look back and say, hey, you know, I haven't been wasting my time. I haven't just been sitting there twiddling my thumbs in my rocking chair or, you know, I'm, I'm actually, you know, doing something, accomplish something, and that just feels good. Um... I have done several projects this year. Um, early this year, I got... I can't really talk much about it. Um, the first couple items, but I can kind of give an overview. I have been doing a fair bit of game accessibility and tech accessibility consulting. Um, I had... That opportunity that I talked about earlier this year where I actually ended up getting a PlayStation 5 to work with. And <laughs> with the chip shortages and everything and how hard it is, I was just literally talking to someone this morning about them. They were trying to, they've been trying to find a PS5 forever and they still can't find one. Uh, and I said, yeah, I wouldn't, I tried looking for one a couple times myself and I couldn't find one. And if it wouldn't have been for looking into this consulting opportunity, I wouldn't have one either. So um, that was a really cool experience. Again, I can't really talk details about it due to uh, non-disclosure agreements, NDAs. Um, but it was a really, really cool kind of opportunity. Got to really go in depth with the system, uh, talk about it, and like I said, do some kind of consulting and advocacy accessibility advocacy stuff and that's where I'll stop there as far as that goes um, but I also did a lot of other um, consulting work this year like I did a play I did a play test session I don't know if I'm legally allowed to say for what I did I think I've seen other people who I knew were in it as well talk about it online but just to be safe I'm just gonna say I did a play test for a major AAA game. I want to say this springish, early this summer, and that was a lot of fun. That was a, again a really neat experience. This was a couple day experience where we just really sat down and went through like loads of different types of gameplay for the game and just all kinds of stuff. So it was a really kind of a neat experience. Did it all virtually too. Um, so that was fun. Um, and then I've done some panels. I've done some 
again, just consult, lighter consulting and sort of interview type of things, just getting people, uh, you know, giving them information about my experiences or, you know, a little more technical stuff. I love talking to developers because I can go a little bit more into detail, you know, and I don't, you know, I try not to go into like super detail on the technical stuff here because some people may be into it. Some people may not be. Some people just want to know, hey, can I do this? Can I not do this? Um, but again, I still like to give some detail because if a developer does see my video that happens to be covering their game or their hardware, um, you know, I want to give them some at least feedback to go, oh, well, if we're going to do another one of these or we're going to make another game or updated piece of hardware, uh, this, these are some of the things that we really should consider for low vision and blind accessibility. So, um, you know, I did have, I had a couple of them in the last couple of months. They were super fun. Again, I, I really, really enjoy doing this stuff. Um, so consulting, uh, game accessibility consulting, loved it, love doing it. And I hope I get more opportunities next year. Um, like I can actually kind of feel like I can say outside of my day, like my day job, I'm an assistive technology specialist with the state, which I still love. Like I still enjoy that job, but man, like the, this, the stuff that I've been doing the last three, four years, um, outside of my day job, just consulting and advocacy and stuff. Like I feel like I can finally sort of say, "Hey, I'm an I'm an actual professional because I've gotten paid for some of these things." And I'm not gonna lie, it feels pretty damn good, you know. Um, I enjoy it a lot. So yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, we'll be getting more oppor I'll be getting more opportunities in the future. You know, I'm not looking for fame and glory. You know, I'm not going to post like, hey, look at this thing that I got from this company and look at, you know, all this stuff that, you know, I see quite a bit of online. Like, you know, that's cool. Like if I get little perks here and there. But honestly, like I said, I'm I'm really into it for I just I love seeing the progression forward that we've made, even going from like 2015 to now the end of 2021, the amount of like industry-wide improvement in accessibility is we have a long way to go for sure however like i am very happy with the progress that we've made because i mean prior to 2015 or so you could just cue the cricket sound effect you know i mean there really wasn't much of anything as far as mainstream game accessibility, yeah, you know, we'd get a few indie developers throwing a, some, a bone with an audio game every now and again. We'd get some good voiceover games here and there. But things have gotten so much better. Like, there's a long way to go, but it is getting a lot better. Uh, let me see. Let me look at my notes here. Oh, yes. Um... XR Access and Microsoft. So yeah, again, I discovered XR Access, that organization in 2020, and I have been continually involved with them because as you know, I cover virtual reality on this channel. I've I've covered the Oculus Rift since it came out. And I've been very vocal about um VR accessibility and suggestions and reporting bugs and uh, <clears throat> digressions shall we say in the oculus app accessibility so yeah um xr access they're a really great group of people i've met some really uh really interesting people doing just cool work development and research and like yeah i've you know, I've made some great friends uh, in that organization now, and shout out to all those guys, and I really look forward to seeing it. We're really starting, the organization is pretty new. I joined it pretty close to the beginning of it, probably a year in, and, you know, they're, we're kind of at the stage right now where, you know, they're still looking for people. Like, if, if you're a developer and you're interested in doing 
virtual or augmented reality accessibility, you know, adding that to your product, or if you are a person who is blind or visually impaired or any other disability for that matter, um, they're, you know, they're looking for people's perspectives, suggestions, stories, feedback, um, you know, consultant type stuff. They're looking for all of that. So, you know, xraccess.org. Uh, and next year, they're really starting to shift gears toward, okay, we've established ourselves, we're starting to look at different paths that we can take, but this next year, we're really going to be trying to focus more on, hopefully, some deliverable products. Now, some of them may not be, they may not be, like, for the end user, for you and me, necessarily, but what we're especially hoping to accomplish, at least I hope that we can accomplish, is that, you know, right now people are always just, they're just wondering, well, what can I do? How would I make it accessible? And with the group of people that we have, you know, making some prototypes, making some examples, like, okay, you know, it's all nice and fine to make a bulleted list and say, this is what you should do to make your app blind accessible. But if we can, you know, create some templates or create some prototypes of, oh, this is how you would do, like, a, this is how you could do a social room in VR. This is how you could do uh, some user interface designs for different types of user interfaces. And so I'm really interested, I'm really intrigued to see what becomes of that in the next year or so. Um, so, yeah, XR Access, very happy to be uh, a part of that organization. They have their annual XR Access Symposium uh, every summer. I think it's been in like July. I think the next one's going to be possibly in June. So those are open to the public and you can check those out ne you know, next time. So yeah, XR Access. And then I've also been a part of Microsoft Low Vision Advisory Board. I've been doing that for about three years now. Good God, time flies. And, you know, there again, there's a lot of stuff I can't necessarily talk about due to NDA, but we work on naturally, you know, Microsoft. We look at, you know, Windows, Office, all kinds of stuff that might happen to be there. And just kind of, uh, there's a group of us that work and we look at how to improve um, accessibility for low vision. Uh, some blind, but especially low vision, because I believe... They do have another group um, for people who are totally blind that focus more on the peer blindness accessibility. That being said, a lot of the things, again, there's crossover. A lot of things that can benefit blind uh, benefit low vision. Like, yeah, screen readers are necessities for totally blind users. However, they are very, very helpful for us with low vision as well. So we do look at stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, that's been a really fun thing, and I look forward to, uh, you know, seeing what's going to happen with that in the future. Windows 11 just came out in October for some people, and that's going to continue slowly rolling out over the next few months. Like I said, I just got my machine upgraded uh, on Halloween. I, I got it, and so... I've been playing with Windows 11, well, and I've been playing it with it on my Surface Go a little bit too. But um, yeah, Microsoft Low Vision Group, that's been pretty fun as well. Let's see what we got here. Then we have, oh yeah, Local IGDA, um, Independent Game Developers Association. I've been a part of that now for about two, three years. Thanks for, again, you know, thank you to Riley for kind of making me even think of that. I mean, I wish I would have thought of that sooner because, hell, I would have done that probably a few years ago now had I thought to uh, do that sort of a thing. Um, haven't been quite as active. It's We're still doing things virtually, um, you know, but I've had a few other things on days that we've had meetings, so it hasn't worked out quite as well this year. You know, last year I did that presentation uh, in, in the summer of 2020, which is on my channel, by the way, um, on game accessibility, because I thought, hey, you know what, we've got a group of indie developers here, and um, hey, wh whatever I can do to help 
get a developer to go, oh, we could, you know, we could do some accessibility work here. We could make, we could, yeah, let's do that. So uh, that went really well. Um, again, they're a fun group of people. I do look forward to when that is able to uh, be in person again. Um, we're going to have to meet somewhere else, I think, because the place we used to meet, which was really, really cool, um, I think that organization moved. I don't think they're in that building anymore. So we may... I'm hoping maybe there'll be a, or a place that'll be a little closer um, if we meet in person again, or when we meet in person again, so we'll see. But IGDA, that's been uh, quite fun as well. Hearing about some indie games and what people are working on and helping how I can. And then not tech and game related, but like, uh, but drumming, you know, uh, this year I started taking that a lot more seriously. I said, you know what? Uh, I didn't play quite a bit when Riley was up here. I kind of took a hiatus on that. And then I started getting back into it last year. Um, got that new drum stool, drum throne. It's a lot more comfortable for me to play now. Uh, and, uh, it's, it's, but this year, I really said, you know, let's just uh, kind of keep active and do something different, enjoy some music. I've been drumming pretty much every to every other day. For a while, I was doing it every day, but I was sort of getting burnt out a little bit. I'm like, eh, maybe I don't have to do it every day. Um, so I've kind of been taking um, a little bit more of like, okay, I'm going to do some drumming today. You know, maybe I'll do some stretches the other day. I'll do some, you know, little bit of uh, weight, um, you know, weights with dumbbells and stuff one day. But like, yeah, about every day, every other day, uh, I've been doing drumming, and I've definitely felt myself getting better. Um, I feel a little bit more comp confident. Confident. There we go. Uh, improvising a little bit. Did I clean this door here? I think I did. Let me double check. Yep. Um, so yeah, I, I've really found that to be just really helpful, you know, get my mind off tech, get my mind off of work, get my mind off of the stuff that I usually do and just enjoy, you know, I'm not traveling, I, I'm working from home still the vast majority of the time, so I don't listen to music on the way to work as much as I used to, so... I want to be able to not only listen to music, but hey, if I can learn how to play some of it, even better. And I've been having a blast with it. So really, really had fun with drumming this year. So, you know, if you've always kind of wanted to pick up an instrument, just give it a shot. You know, I mean, pick up a guitar, pick up a bass, pick up, uh, you know, get a, if you're in, if you're in an apartment, you can get an electronic drum kit so far, knock on wood. But I haven't had any complaints as far as noise. You know, I put headphones in and I'm able to play my electronic drum kit, play along to my phone, and it works brilliantly. I'm going to play some later today, probably, um, after I get done doing some of these videos. <clears throat> so that's been really fun. Definitely recommend, especially if you love music. Uh, it's a great great thing to do. So that's kind of my update stuff. Now we'll move into, we'll do a couple more things this video and then we'll break it off. So um, podcasts, other things that I've been working on this year, kind of that's, that has been really fun. And last year, I remember, I remember that I said I wanted to do more, um, you know, guest hosts on podcasts or videos or public speaking, that kind of a thing, which again, it just amuses the hell out of me because in high school, early college, I was like terrified of public speaking, uh, mainly because I think, you know, high school, you were around everyone that you knew, and I always used to get shit no matter what from everybody, you know, oh, you know, whether it's my vision or they'd always find something to kind of make fun of me about, so I just, I hated that. And then it was also like, okay, you're in speech class and you have to give a speech on politics or give a speech on reciting, remembering something, I don't know, like the Gettysburg Address and then saying it, you know, repeating it or like you're saying a speech. And I just, that I wasn't into. 
But if it's something that I can, you know, if it's something that I know something about and I feel comfortable with, yeah, I can blab endlessly, as you've no doubt found, if you've been following the channel for a while. Okay, we got our house done, except for our roofs. I think that's all we have left is our roof. So let me drink, uh, get a drink of water really quick. Um, there we go. But yeah, podcasts and videos. Uh, I have been invited, I think at least a couple times on Theory of a Blind Man. Uh, I had fun with him quite a bit last year. I was on several episodes of his uh, last year, and uh, I was on a couple more this year. So I know he was going through some stuff, so I really, really wish him the best for all the crap he is going through. Uh, I hope he's feeling much better. I hope he's staying safe. And everyone else that's been on the... Um, been on that show like Danny Marie um she's been in my streams several times this year and I need to get back into I need to follow her streams a little bit more I've joined her streams a couple times too uh to support her but uh she's another low vision gamer and um no it's been really fun um but theory of a blind man did that a little bit I was on I think one or two episodes of uh of um, Breakdown Walls, Brandon, Brandon Cole invited me on, and I got to be on a really fun one, because after E3 this year, boy howdy, a lot of stuff, of course, being announced, and uh, I was able to be a guest host on that episode, and we went through literally everything E3, all the press announcements, some of the major games that were announced... I mean, that was, what, a couple hour long podcast? But it was fun. I can't believe that was this year. My God. That seems like ages ago. Again, wow. I'm just thinking back. Like, that was this year. How crazy is that? But, um, you know, this was a year of where everything, especially Microsoft, made their comeback, and everything is on Game Pass. This game, on Game Pass. <laughs> that was our repeated... You know, we ha you have to do the right inflection about it, too. Uh, but that was a fun one, so I really enjoyed that. I'm happy to come on and help you out and uh, co-host whenever you, whenever you need again there, Brandon. So, um, that was fun. And then uh, I got invited to do... The Blind Abilities, uh, the Tech Abilities podcast. I've been on Blind Abilities a couple times before in the past where I've talked about my day job at SSB. I've talked about assistive technology a little bit. I might have, I don't remember uh, what other ones, but those are the main topics that I had been on. But Jeff was looking for uh, another person to join their ranks of uh, people. And so, yeah, the latter half of this year or so, I have been doing the uh, tech abilities. Uh, we've kind of taken a break here in late De late November, early December, because there really just hasn't been much of anything going on to talk about in the realm of technology and accessibility, assistive technology. There really hasn't been much of anything since... Like I said, Black Friday, that kind of a thing, it's really kind of calmed down. So we've been off for a little while, but hopefully beginning of next year we'll be able to ramp up again and I'll be able to uh, be on that again. So that that's a lot of fun. And then in addition to tech abilities, I was uh, invited to be a co-host um, on regular blind abilities. Talk again about SSB a little bit. Uh, we did a... We actually got to do an interview with the developer of Sorty Quest. So shout out to you, man. Congratulations on all the work that you're doing with that game because, man, like the way you're supporting accessibility, the way you're supporting blind accessibility, voiceover, adding content, adding fixes, 
new actual types of gameplay. Like, you're killing it, man, so shout out to you. Uh, I, I've totally forgotten your name. I think it's Chris, but uh, if I got the wrong name, I totally apologize. Um, but yes, um, got to be on a couple regular episodes of, uh, of uh, Blind Ability, so that's been fun. And then, uh, a little bit before Thanksgiving, actually, I got to be, um, I offered to be, because they were looking for guests, and I was, uh, I had watched a couple of their other episodes, Vision Forward in Wisconsin, their tech talk show, they were looking for people to come chat about either topics or technology, and I said, hey, I can chat, uh, do my accessible gaming spiel uh, for them. So there were three of us in that particular show, and that was a lot of fun. That was a video uh, podcast appearance kind of a deal, and it was live when it happened. It is archived on their channel, and I should have a link to it on my game accessibility playlist, a link to their uh, that, that, that episode of theirs. So it was about an hour long, and we just talked all things bl uh, gaming accessibility, mainstream games, iOS games, uh, access, you know, audio games, a little bit of VR. Uh, but it was a really fun kind of like, here, hey, here's where we are, current state of the state of the union, as it were. You know, this is where we're at at the at, at the end of 2021, uh, as far as game accessibility goes. So that's been a lot of fun and uh you know if uh we find another topic that would be fun to do in the future i would totally be willing to chat with those guys again because uh yeah that was a lot of fun so yeah i've been doing some guest uh, appearances here and there no real presentations formal presentations or anything like that this year but like i said that kind of ties into the consulting and advocacy work that i've done so i have done stuff that way but no like large group uh just flat out presentations or anything like that um but yeah so i did want to improve that from last year and thankfully i have gotten to do that i've gotten to uh do more um podcasting and such and i hope to do even more next year i think um you know, I think we will end this video now um, because I can start another video for the next topic. So why don't we do that? Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give it a like if you did. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you to everybody who has been supporting the channel, supporting the stream. Much appreciated. Hope everyone has a happy holidays. You can follow me on Twitter at BGFH79, twitch.tv slash illegally cited, IllegallyCited.com and right here on YouTube. Until next time, I will chat with everyone in the next video.